Good day, Chris. First of all, thank you so much for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. So back in September of 2022, just last year, we did an HPT video. And when we were done with that, I asked you if you'd be interested in talking to me and our audience about LCMSs, Learning Content Management Systems. And uh, but I wanted to say that as I prepared for this, I was listening to some Canadian rockers. I was listening to Neil Young and the Guess Who and some lighter stuff, Gordon uh, Lightfoot, the, the late Gordon Lightfoot, and uh, Joni Mitchell, just to prepare myself to, you know, talk stuff, shop with a Canadian. <laughs> it put you in the mood for talking to a Canadian company. Awesome. Yep. Brilliant. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. Just, just to start us off here, who are some of your favorite Canadian rockers? Yeah. So, you know, from that same era slash generation, um, I would add Leonard Cohen uh, okay. into that mix. Um, I managed to see him um, about seven or eight years ago when he was on his, I think it was jokingly referred to as his endless retirement tour. His, mm -hmm. um, his manager had stolen all his money and he discovered suddenly that he was in his 70s and had no money. So he started doing shows and they started as smaller concert halls here in Canada. And he just kept going and growing and growing. And by the time I saw him, it was a 10,000 seat hockey arena, you know, um, absolute joyous experience. So that's from that same generation, I would throw Leonard Cohen into the mix uh, for sure. Well, I thought you'd bring up some some things from the younger generation because I well, I, I'm a generation I, or so older than you are. Yeah, yeah. But I appreciate, to, you know, all the folks that you named for sure, too. So um, I, I will. I will uh, reveal that my first rock concert period was a Canadian double bill combo lover boy with Brian Adams as the opening act. And <laughs> two years later, Brian Adams was the headliner for everything in the world. And then eventually, you know, uh, doing soundtracks for Kevin uh, Costner movies and, you know, stuff like that. But uh, mm -hmm. so I, I think I was in eighth grade, grade eight uh, at the time. That was my first concert experience. Now, I did not continue. Uh, I mean, you listen to all that stuff through high school, et cetera, but they're not currently in my set of playlists. Yeah. Um, and and I you know, was thinking about this ahead of our call and I went to my playlists and I I found suddenly I had like a dozen names on the list. And I thought, well, that's that's a lot. And, and we aren't really here to talk about that. But the one the next generation group that I uh, that I would throw into the mix for uh, for Canadians is um, and. A lot of us think of them as the Canadian national band. Um, it's a band called the Tragically Hip. Um, they they had some success in the U.S., but within Canada, uh, because of what they did, they wrote, wrote a lot of songs that had a Canadian focus, either like touching on historical or, or uh, current events, etc., or even just positioning the story of their songs in, in Canadian geographic uh, places and locations, etc. Became really, really big internally. They they have a whole career of, of you know of being Canadian rock stars within Canada, which is really tough. You can't hardly anybody can make it in Canada and actually have a career. Everybody has to pretty much leave and, and make it somewhere else. But um, they opened tours for for the Rolling Stones, uh, among other things. Um, so you know they had their their external success, but they really are kind of a Canadian gem, and we keep them you know close to our heart. Um, five or six years ago, lead singer Gord Downey had um, a really aggressive brain cancer. And so they did one final national tour, eight dates across the country. Um, they're super close to my heart because they're actually from a, a small city about an hour from where I grew up. And the first summer that my wife and I started dating, they actually played in our hometown bar twice that summer. So they were kind of the soundtrack to, to my wife and I's early years together and they've always remained uh you know close to our hearts for that reason too so so Very cool. that's who i would throw into the mix the tragically hip also known simply as the hip the hip okay well that, that's very cool thank you so much for sharing that with me mm -hmm. I, I was i was just interested in that because i was when we were setting this up i was thinking about all the canadian rockers that i listened to from my mm -hmm. generation and i'm you know kind of old school because i'm an old guy but uh, <laughs> uh so enough of that uh let's uh, tell me a little bit about uh, um, an LCMS. Can you define the generic learning content management systems? This is something that I've been very interested in for decades, 
because of my approach to instruction and instructional architecture and looking at modular content and how to reuse content and save time and money uh, addressing uh, audiences and trying to get very specific about you know what are your outputs and tasks and but here's a bunch of uh, knowledge and skills that can be kind of generic they can apply to many different applications mm -hmm. in different work processes etc and so I always saw the promise of content management systems used in media firms back in the 80s and such, I think is probably when they became more well known. Uh, and the use of that in the learning space. But so tell our audience a little bit, what is a learning content management system? Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we'll start with the, the acronym itself and start with what it's not, because that's always been the struggle talking to people, because we have this other beast in our industry called the LMS, the Learning Management System, which is one word different, right? So the, the number of times that we'll, we'll say to someone, oh, we have a learning content management system, and they go, oh, oh, um, can I get reports for my learner completions? Or, or oh, can I do instructor-led training in that? Or, or something, and we're like... Whoa. <laughs> so truthfully, we've cycled. We, um, you know, we used the phrase LCMS early on for a good chunk of a decade. We we just simply simplified it by saying we're an authoring tool, but we're web-based and therefore we bring these extra values to you because that phrase of LCMS just uh, for a while just kind of phased out as well, plus that confusion uh, with LMS. Um, but it is something that in the last five years or so has suddenly had another resurgence, particularly for large organizations who are recognizing that there is something you know more that we could be doing. So the other thing that it's not is it's not a desktop authoring tool for e-learning, right? You're not running something locally on your hard drive, making an e-learning thing, publishing it necessarily as a SCORM package, and then uploading that into your LMS. Um, an LCMS is a web-based tool. And so it has a lot of extra things wrapped around. You are making things, and we'll talk about the things you can make, because it's not just limited to, in our case, the e-learning SCORM packages, but, um, but make things, but then you're wrapped around with, um, you know, there's a whole database structure underlying everything. You mentioned content. So we have a media library where you can upload, you know, single versions of um, standard graphics like the company logo, et cetera. Reuse that everywhere. And then when the marketing team says, hey, new new logo, brand change or whatever, you're up replacing that in the media library and propagating that out to all the places where it's been used in your learning content rather than going through every single thing page by page going, is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Oh, we missed one and, and still discovering that, you know, years later. So there's that um, asset content uh, reuse. Um, and then we've also got a um, another level that we would describe as um, as learning content reuse. And we can we can dig into that more. But because it's a web-based tool, we also have built-in processes for content review. So you don't have to take the thing and give it to people somewhere else in order to get feedback on it. It's all baked into the tool. Um, content sharing, content uh, collaboration, people can work in real time. So it's a lot of stuff going on. But the core idea of an LCMS is this idea of making content and making it um, easy because you're working more or less over top of a database model, uh, in a sense, to be able to take things and say, oh, we've already made this. Let's use it in another context or for another context, et cetera, uh, maybe virtually as is, or maybe with some behavioral differences too, depending on, on what we need to do. Yeah, that's what's so interesting to me is that uh, um, I know that there are these systems around and I know that the, that that's what your, you know, functional tool does. So, mm -hmm. you know, let's dive in and, and tell us a little bit about the company and your sure. role yeah, in yeah. it and launch right into you know, your product. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I'll switch to sharing my screen here because I do have okay. a, you know, gosh darn it, there's some slides involved here. But uh, I think I think they do a good job of at least telling the beginning part of the story. So here, let me just uh, share my screen. Um, so I've been with Domino for 21 plus years. Um, and from the very start of my time, basically, um, at Domino, that's when we were actually creating our original um our original version of what we call the LCMS. Um, we were prior to my time, we had a, a, a track record in providing off the shelf courses in the electronics manufacturing and um, so, you know, how to, how to do circuit board soldering in the wireless industries, et cetera. And those were actually done and distributed on CD-ROMs. And then this internet thing came along and, and somebody said, well, now we got to do it over here. So we, 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 
took the content that was originally made for CD-ROM and started shifting it over to something that could be delivered, um, you know, via the internet in a web-based kind of a model. Um, so roughly around the time when I first joined Domino, that's when we actually had our first version of our LCMS um, available and out there for folks. Now, uh, you were making content as flash pages and then loading it in. So it was more of a structuring device. But all the way back in that time frame already, we had this idea of, of reusable content that you could make something and, and share it across multiple projects, et cetera. Um, you know, a couple of other milestones. By, by 2011, we'd added our own authoring, um, at fully HTML5. So the things you make in our tool, totally accessible across any device, any screen uh, you know, that you need it to have uh, be displayed on. 2016, our responsive design authoring option, what we call Flow, um, responsive design is the way that the, the internet is made. So you look at um, Apple's website on your widescreen, you might see things uh, displayed horizontally. You, you're, you check it out later on your phone, and now the same stuff is there, but it's, it's stacked up maybe vertically instead. That ability to make a better user experience, a better viewer experience, depending on the screen uh, you know, settings that, uh, that someone's looking at. Uh, in 2018, we added our, our tool called Capture for creating software lessons. Um, you know, a lot of tools can do a, you know, a try me, a, a show me, a try me, um, et cetera. Um, what we do with that is we also have a, we call it a guide view. So it actually breaks it out in more of a training manual approach, step by step. Um, so, you know, rather than trying to watch an animation or a video and, and trying to stay, you can actually flip it over to this view. Um, you know, great for printable content too. Um, so we added that in 2018. And most recently, um, something else that we've added is um, uh, we call it Convey. It's our, our dynamic content delivery and publishing service. So, and it does a couple of things, and I'll, I'll explain those you know here in a heartbeat. Um, basically, you, you know, we've got twenty years of, of doing this under our belt, hearing people's problems, solving for those problems. You know, always advancing uh, the tool too. So, so we've been around a while. We are. The, the space of LCMSs is, is um, uh, it's getting narrower all the time. Uh, there are still, you know, a few other tools around, but we've also seen a lot of attrition over time. Um, a couple of the tools that were around back when we started just didn't uh, didn't make it uh, after ver various purchases and mergers, et cetera. They start falling off of, of the radars, et cetera. So this is um this is how we try to explain the big picture value of what we can do for folks mm -hmm. with the tool um the idea that you can create content in one place um and then with our dynamic publishing service then distribute that content wherever it's needed whether that's for formal learning in your lms or also distributing that content then as um, on demand or informal learning you know when someone actually needs to to, to access info um, we all know the story. <laughs> you, you, you did the onboarding curriculum for your new job in the uh, in the LMS, and you got 100% in all five of those courses. <laughs> and two weeks later, you're doing the job, and you've forgotten everything that was not everything, but an awful lot, or, or the subtle details. So, um, you know, making sure that folks are you know, you're ramping up with formal learning to get people going, but making sure that you're providing um, the informal learning and on-demand knowledge that they need in order to actually excel and apply the work that and apply the the information you've given to them on their job. So it kind of, here's here's like a core explanation then, I guess, of, of, of what we feel as our, our big picture value is there, there are tools that can help you make formal learning, desktop authoring tools, other web-based authoring tools, e-learning courses, SCORM packages, um, AICC, CMI5, whatever that standard is. And they, you know, you load that into your LMS and that's great for getting people started. And then there are also a whole category of tools that help people with informal uh, uh, learning and on-demand knowledge. There are tools that can help you create knowledge bases. Um, there are various things that you can do to, you know, provide job aids, including even just, you know, putting Word docs up onto SharePoint, for instance, if people can find them there. But typically, though, those 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 are two different things. They're not. Um, they're disjointed. They're disconnected. Um, particularly um, for for information updates, you've got to go to two different places and 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 do the updating constantly, um, and be monitoring, etc. Um, and what we do with 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 Domino One and our Convey solution is we actually make it easy for you to do all of that stuff in one place and push it to both areas and keep it all synchronized um, very effectively. Basically, eliminating that barrier, removing the duplication of effort uh, between trying to you know put content in multiple places as well, and and 
making sure then too that uh, as soon as an update's available, it's in the hands of people. It's not delayed because now it's got to be changed into something else to go back to the SharePoint document to, or or what have you there. So, so that's a you know that's the kind of the the big picture of how we describe um, mm -hmm. the, you know the problem that we that we hope <laughs> that we help organizations solve. Yeah, it seems to me that you're reducing first costs for developing it in different modes and media. And then life cycle maintenance costs are oh, reduced yeah. because you're just doing it one time and it's doing that. So the content that you're publishing, this is available for push or pull approaches, right? Yep, totally. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, well, so like here's... It. here. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> We're both too polite. Eh? <laughs> so it, here's a little bit more of a dive into that, you know, from, the, um, from a high level anyway. So our Domino One authoring option which is our LCMS. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you make stuff. Um, that could be e-learning courses. It can also be searchable knowledge bases. It could be job aids. Um, you can even publish out as print documentation. Um, the other piece of our equation then is our convey dynamic publishing option, which is basically a content hosting service. So you can publish your package from, from Domino One over to convey. And then depending on what you need it to do, one of the options is that you can publish that um, SCORM package to convey. And then instead of taking that SCORM package out of the authoring tool, moving it over and then uploading it into uh, your LMS, instead of that, what convey creates is um, it's basically a stub file. So you take the stub file and you load that into your LMS. And then moving forward, the content updates that you need to do, you just republish them back to, uh, to the convey dynamic system and automatically because all the lms is launching is the the link that to the to the content in convey it's not actually launching the whole package you no longer have to actually go and upload a whole new package every time that you got to fix a typo or mm -hmm. or there's more serious stuff you know whole content that uh, policy that's been revised or something like that you're not into that slow maintenance cycle i know a lot of teams still have um you know, there's the, the group of content creators of the authoring team, but then there's also a separate LMS administration team. So you have to get on the, the you know, the job list in a sense to be able to, you know, oh, okay, that's going to take us a week because we've got all the other tasks ahead of us that'll take us a week to get that updated. Well, in this model, boom, you push the you push the update, the publish button, and it's automatically the next person who launches it um, in the LMS has the new info already. So that's a that's a huge time savings. Um, we hear that over and over again from from our client team, just that savings of, of um, you know, the administrative time of moving big packages around, for instance. So mm -hmm. the other thing that Convey can do, though, um, besides publishing these SCORM packages, uh, publishing SCORM packages to it and giving you the SCORM stub to load into your LMS, is Convey can also host um, completely independent sites for you. So you could make content and publish it um, um, as a knowledge base to convey. And now you're automatically, you have the URL to share with people who need it. You didn't have to go to take a big package and say, oh, we've made this thing, IT team, can you find us a place to put it? And, and now you're in a, you know, another delay cycle and then heaven forbid you need to update that and you got to get back into the IT team cycle, et cetera. Again, and updates would be instantly, um, are instantly reflected in that content. And the whole thing is driven you know, back here in the big circle by the fact that you can use the same content for these purposes as well. So the ability to make something for, for formal learning, but then also reuse the key parts of it as part of something that people can then have available, you know, for, for on the job. Um, you, you're, you know, you're eliminating, first of all, the duplicate systems. So you're not working twice as hard to keep content up to date. You're also, as you've mentioned, eliminating or reducing the, the initial build time because you're making it once and then you're using it for, for multiple purposes too. Mm -hmm. So so that's I the like big, this. So, the so big can I publish for several different departments uh, some common shareable content to them and then also have places for them to create the content that's unique to them because sales is different than finance is different than HR. Yeah, yeah. So, but there are some perhaps common things tasks and outputs that they're responsible for producing so that we can actually push this out to these different sites, as you say, different URLs for the various functional mm -hmm. departments or divisions or whatever, and allow them to kind of control their content. Um, can, can you allow 
you know, different authors? Can I uh, give authoring uh, capability to certain people yeah, yeah. in this department and that department? Yeah, D yeah for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different sort of ways that I can uh, that I'll chime in on that. Um, you know, you can um, mix and match content for multiple things. Um, so uh, a real simple example, um, fire extinguisher training, right? Everybody, mm -hmm. the, the, you yeah. know, the past method of using the, the fire extinguisher, that's the same no matter where you are. But different facilities have fire extinguishers located in different places. Mm -hmm. So you could make one learning object, um, and we'll talk about learning objects in a heartbeat here, but you make one topic, uh, one learning object for how to use a fire extinguisher, and that's in everybody's course. But then if you're in facility A, you also have a separate topic in your course, um, your annual fire safety compliance course or whatever. That's where are the fire extinguishers in facility A and the muster points in facility A. And if you're over in facility B, you've got that separate content. But those two um, courses, they share that one content topic object yeah. completely and it's synchronized for updates. So if there's ever um, you know something that needs to be updated in that, it, they get those updates automatically as well. Mm -hmm. And then also, yes, you can have it within our authoring um, environment, um, the, the content creation environment, you can have um, multiple authors and there could be authors from, you know, HR and uh, from sales or what have you. Um, there can be content designated that they can both work on, but they can also have separate content entirely so that, you know, a lot of the times HR and sales people shouldn't be touching each other's content either right. as well. But right. for those places where something could should be shared or, or et cetera, then the organization the organizations empowered to, to make that happen for sure. Great. Yeah. So that's kind of the big picture from a diagrammatic perspective. Okay. Let me, I'm going to pull this down. Okay. That's enough of PowerPoint. We've had it. <laughs> let's get, let's get to the real stuff. So um, I did log into a site here before, um, okay. before our session. So um, what am I looking at here? Let's make it just a little bigger, Chris. There we go. So this is the authoring environment. Um, has a lot of you know overlap with a lot of other authoring options in a, in our space and our world. What I want to I guess start with is um, over here on the left. Uh, I mentioned the phrase learning object a couple of times, mm -hmm. and so what we've got here is um, we've got a the project title. We call anything you make a project because you're not necessarily going to use it as a course. You might be using it for some other purpose. And a course then is one of the things you can use a project for. Mm -hmm. But so I got the project, I got a module level, I can have as many modules as I want. But then after that, I've got there's an introduction here with a bunch of pages. There's a topic here called types of security threats with two pages and a little bank of test questions. Then there's a topic here called best practices with one page of information and some test questions. Um, there's the rules. And then lastly, there's a, a conclusion as well. So all of these level things here, um, introduction types of security th threats, best practices, these are what we call a learning object. Now, it's an unfortunate thing in our space that we have so many jargon terms and our use of the term learning object sounds an awful lot like learning objective. But it doesn't necessarily have to align with that. Um, but the idea is that you can, in addition to just making pages, you can structure your content around fairly concise topics. In the old school instructional design model that, that I actually learned when I first joined Domino, learning objectives were like a, a course level. Um, and then it was supported by a set of enabling objectives. Yep. So our, our learning object model actually probably more aligns with an enabling objective from that older and that, that, that more classic instructional design uh, model. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and also around the time that, uh, you know, we were coming up with this model and then working with this model, um, Dr. Ruth Colvin Clark had been doing a lot of work with, uh, I think it was Cisco at the time and had come up with this idea of what, you know, what is a learning object? Well, a learning object has um, information and instruction it has practice uh, that someone can help them, you know, moving it to transfer and, and, uh, and moving it into application. And it's also got assessment to it so that you can um, assess the knowledge transfer that the learning object might have um, might have yep. succeeded in, in helping you with. Um, and so that's what, you know, it's very much reflected here. We have this learning object called types of security threats. It's got its information, which may or may not contain practice exercises if we've chosen to set them up. But it's also got... Um, here structurally, that's where we're adding the assessment questions that assess the information 
on these uh, uh, that assess the transfer of knowledge on these particular um, information on the information contained in these two particular pages. Mm-hmm. So in a lot of e-learning authoring tools, you make a course, it's 50 pages, and then you made a test with 20 questions and you tell the test to give people 10 of those 20 questions at random. Um, we take that down to a more finite level. We've got you actually building banks of questions then for individual topics. And that's because this t- idea of a learning object is actually something that this is our level of, of instructional content reuse across multiple projects. Mm-hmm. Little Y icon here is telling me actually that this topic, types of security threats, is being used in more than one place right now. Mm-hmm. And if I double click on the panel, oh, it's being jumpy on me this morning. Um, well, let's go this route. If I jump over to the panel over here, I can see over here that, yeah, it's being used in two projects right now. So it's this is the project here, which is our e-learning course that we're working on, but it's also being shared into a knowledge base. Um, let me flip over and show you the knowledge base. Actually, before we do that, let's just take a quick peek. Here's what the e-learning course looks like. Not unexpectedly, you know, nav bars, page counter, yeah. moving through linearly, et cetera, to go through the different parts of things. Let me pop then instead to the knowledge base version. Okay, so here's the knowledge base version. Um, you know, you see the same topics over here, mm-hmm. except there's actually a couple that we didn't include. Um, let me do a preview of this and explain, uh, and then gives you a, you know, a clearer picture of what we're talking about here. So here's the knowledge based version of this content. Um, we have within the, you know, the content creation environment, we have, um, we have a whole batch of what we call themes and they're, um, they're, they're just different ways of framing the content for how the learner is going to navigate it. So some of those themes are e-learning, right? You know, forward buttons and that sort of a thing, but we have a theme called the knowledge based theme. Um, and when you apply it, it gives you this landing page, built-in search functionality, uh, cards for structuring and jumping, et cetera. Um, no navigation forward and back because you're not expecting people to, enc- to, to consume this content, you know, linearly from, from start to finish, mm-hmm. et cetera. Um, also, you know, other things like job aids that have different menu structures and, and, and such to sort of make that kind of an experience happen uh, quickly and easily. So for, for, for the knowledge base, we didn't, we've only included three of the learning objects from that other project, uh, the course version of that content, because in a knowledge base, we don't need an introduction, right. right? We don't need the conclusion. It's not contextually you know, relevant. It's not providing anything. So we're able to mix and match. And for this knowledge base, if there were other IT courses or whatever, we could also bundle in LOs from them as well to bring them all together here um, in one place. So that's you know that's kind of the, the secret sauce I guess of what we're doing they, this idea of single sourcing around this this notion of a, a reusable content topic or a learning object. Mm-hmm. Um, in this version here, we have the test questions. They're still part of the learning object, but there's no assessment because we're just trying to help people in a time of need, right? In the flow of work, right? Um, you think about the five moments of need. Um, you, you know, learning new, learning when things change. You know, learning <laughs> when the when something's on fire and you just need it quick, right? So. Um, so content, you know, management wise, content creation wise, um, you can do all of that in one place. The other piece of the equation then is if I pop over here to the share, I can instantly publish this now, this knowledge base out as a web link. Um, and I, now I, you know, in a heartbeat, I'll have a URL that I can give to people and they can go here on their mobile device. They can go here on their you know computer, whatever they need, their phone, um, to get information when they need it. Boom. I've got a. I've got a link. Oh, it's still finishing its process. We'll right. check on it again. The other option here is the other, um, for the course version, I could do the the publish for LMS. And as I say, that gives us then, it moves the SCORM content to convey, but in, and then instead of moving a whole big package to the LMS, I use a, what we call a SCORM stub. It's basically a link. And then when the learner launches the course in the LMS, it calls to our convey service to launch the content. Mm-hmm. Um, the minute that I make a change, uh, because these learning objects are linked here, if I come into this topic here and I make a change, I'm just going to make a big obvious one, AA here. 
If I go back to the course version, automatically it has this update because this learning object is really only being used once. This is where yeah. the database model comes in, right? Um, if I make that change, I can pop over here and I can share again instantly, boom. My knowledge base link is updated, go back to the course, republish it, and the, and the SCORM package is published again, it is, is already updated. So that's the, you know, the secret, the, the whole combination of all of our different secret sauces to one very flavorful palette. Sorry, I, I got stuck on that secret sauce mes met <laughs> metaphor and couldn't let it go. I was starting to get a little bit absurd on it, I guess, but... There we go. So there's the there's the knowledge base. Mm -hmm. um, learner says, oh, I, they might not find what they're looking for here, so they're going to do a search for malware, and boom, here are all the hits. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them are pages. Some of them are text items. If you had uh, videos with metadata that said malware, they could you know, it would pull up videos, images, the whole thing um, down to that very granular level because maybe that video is exactly what they need rather than a whole page or something like that. So. So that's kind of you know the the diagrammatic version of, of what I walked through. This mm -hmm. is this is it, you know, live here in action then. Yeah. Well, thank you uh for sharing all of this because I was selfishly interested mm -hmm. in your tool as an LCMS and some of the uh, features and uh, benefits and advantages of your system how it worked so that I could see you know, how does my approach to mm -hmm. modularization architecture of instructional content for the purpose of getting very specifically performance oriented and with unique and shareable content. And so that um, because one of the things I've done in the past is create designs uh, at, at a learning and development path or an event or a module or lesson uh, level where I am doing kind of plug and play, where I'm taking content from another uh, previous project and plugging it in and then using it as is or making a modification and then creating a derivative. And then I can inventory, you know, all the active listing derivatives because everybody's application of active listing might be a slightly different and, and mm -hmm. a little bit unique, but there's a core of active listening that's common to everybody. And so I wanted to, to kind of see, you know, how you you guys have approached this. And so, uh, because I think this is very important as we move forward, uh, we can have all sorts of uh, generative AI uh, generating content for us, but we need a way to organize that and to make not only our learning more effective, to, but to make the whole process of creating it efficient and learning it efficient and mm -hmm. uh, the more we can uh, organize that for its use by the learners performers i think all the better yeah uh, you, you know you were mentioning you know different audiences and and contexts and uh, what we just talked about here is that context of you know initial formal learning and then reusing that content for helping people in the flow of work or on the job performance mm -hmm. support that kind of stuff um, you know, you can, of course, um, make multiple courses, you know, for different audiences. Like we talked about the fire extinguisher and, you know, but even right. you know, regional differences of, of content we have, um, we had a, a, here in Canada, there are 10 provinces and they've all got their own regulations plus federal re regulations, particularly when it comes to things like finances, mm -hmm. uh, financial stuff. So, um, we had a client team that was national and they would have to have 10 courses for everything, one for every province. Yeah. But, you know, if, if there were 10 topics, 10 learning objects, nine of them were identical. And then, you know, for every region, they had one topic that addressed the, you know, the provincial angle of, of things, et cetera, for instance. But, it, you know, they're making one thing. Yeah. Duplicating it 10 times and then altering it rather than rather than making, you know, it over scratched. And then with those topics that are shared, they're synchronized. Right. So they can make the changes in the first one, know that they're all there. And then all they have to do is republish to, to refresh the information. Yeah. Uh, one of my clients back in the 90s, well, it was General Motors. They had this big initiative in the early 90s to do bug them best under General Motors. They had so much redundancy across all of their instructional training products that the maintenance of that was killing them. And they mm -hmm. had unnecessary redundancy. I had another project with the uh, Norfolk Naval Shipyard, and they had 27 two-hour modules on active listening. And 
you know, how many different ways do you need to approach that? <laughs> and, and so there's a lot of arbitrary differences that don't need to be there. Yeah. And that just increases your first cost as well as all of your life cycles oh. because the maintenance of that unnecessary redundancy will eat your lunch. Totally. We have um, one of the major pharma companies and they've been our client for almost a decade now, pretty much a decade. Um, and their purpose in searching out for the a tool and settling on us was that every place was doing its own like sales related documentation yeah. training stuff. Um, and so they said, no, we need to put it all in one place so we can start with it. Um, and, and that pharmacy world, um, uh, you know, a drug might be approved for certain things in, in one country mm -hmm. and the next country over, there's another set of regulations where there's something, you know, different, et cetera. Um, so one of the things, that, and secondly, they found that they had a lot of content that they were employing third-party vendors to create. And then where is that for updating? And it's a nuisance and yeah. um, et cetera. So, um, you know, two value points that they were really searching for was centralizing everything so that they could start with the core mm -hmm. and then it could move through. And we have, um, you can see there's a big button here for translation, but we have um, a translation process as well as a, a localization process. So mm -hmm. um, they might start with the core, but then um, that moves to the next country team who then alter some of that, you know, so it's not completely identical. It's it's shared, it's, you know, regionalized, et cetera. Um, and then it starts having to be translated into other languages, et cetera, but it, they know where everything is. They still employ third-party vendors a lot to, to make the content um, mm -hmm. to get things started. But once it's done, they also know where it is for them to be able to do updates without, without having to go back to the vendor and say, we need to change these three things. And then there's a delay cycle and, and yeah. costs, et cetera, that, that they're, they're now empowered and they, they know where everything is too. <laughs> um, in, in the days of, I don't know that it's so common anymore, but there was definitely a period where third-party vendor would make something for you, but they'd hold on to the source files. <laughs> so you couldn't, yeah. you know, they're trying to, you know, um, continue their relationship, let's say, you know, from, from that from that kind of an approach. But in this, in this model, that client team knows where everything is. They've got it all in one place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, we had one other client team that had, um, it was an HR benefits type tool. They had um, rolling out a big, big update to it. And they had two kind of core audiences that they needed to educate on the, on the changes. Um, there was, you know, the folks who worked in the tool on a daily basis, and there were about 20 tasks that they needed them to, to know. There were also um, the HR level, uh, HR department managers and those sorts of folks who didn't need to know all of the 20 things, but there were about 10 things that they needed to do, how to run certain reports, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, we actually helped that team, uh, that client team build the content too. So we built the first project for them with 20 tasks. Uh, for the you know the standard um, user, we made the project for the for the manager course version, and then shared the ten topics in, and just gave them new introduction and conclusion uh, wrapped around that. So the the second audience content, we were able to push the button in you know an hour really to publish it right because all we had to do was share it and then add in the the, the, the new stuff, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then those 10 topics are synchronized to the original course for any changes and updates moving forward as yeah. well. And the manager group, the, the, the standard users, they had to take a test, <laughs> including you know software simulation testing. The managers were not required to take a test. So even the behavior of the content was different, uh, you know, for the two different audiences, just mm -hmm. based on settings that we applied. So. Yeah, it's well, I think so there's so much power in yeah, exactly in, in an approach like this and a tool like mm -hmm. this that enables um, that it's you know like the car manufacturers you know they're using the same battery in a whole bunch of different different cars the brake systems may be different depending on the size and power of the engine but but this ability to to reuse as appropriate content and to make modifications not using everything as is but be able mm -hmm. to create a you know the parent child relationship where you've got you know the original content and derivatives and be able to organize and store all that and maintain that because you know otherwise it's all going out of date and i think historically yeah, sure. our field has produced a lot of throwaway content simply because we don't know where it is you know, let's just create some new stuff because it's too hard to go find all of that. And and what you guys have got here just makes that so much more effective and efficient in terms of yeah. just creating and managing and administrating content. 
And, and as people change, like, you know, team members come and go, mm -hmm. uh, some people leave, new people come on, et cetera. You always know where it is. Like yeah. you said, where, where is it? Was it, well, so-and-so left, did they take everything on their hard drive and put it in SharePoint like they were supposed to on the last day of work and, mm -hmm. you know, or, or did it all get there or, oh, um, what's the difference between protecting IT policy A1 and protecting AT pol IT policy A1B? What's the file differences between, you know, so yeah. we do have things like versioning and, um, and, yeah. and uh, you know, be able to track you know content changes over time a lot of tool sets for like that for that kind of stuff too so plus as i say you always know where it is you your organization is in control of its own content and it's mm -hmm. not spread out all over multiple computers uh, etc hey we, we're in this world of folks working from home right it's a web-based yeah. thing you everybody can get to it no matter where they are we have you know we have global clients uh started our with our tool because everybody was in offices around the world but accessing it now everybody's at home offices you know around the world it makes it even more um more valuable from that perspective that you know things are not on people's hard drives so all right well um what what have we missed what else can you share with us well i'll i'll i'll, I'll give a little teaser um in one of our upcoming releases um we're adding um another sort of more granular level of this right now you know the example i've shown you here is i've actually got two projects that are sharing the same um content um we're adding in um the ability for you to add contextual tags to things so that could be elements on the page or it could be whole topics or it could be pages etc and then when you publish it you're telling it which of those content tag types of content that you want to show so you might have um, a lesson in an e-learning that starts off with an introduction. Um, ah, as you've seen in the last topic, we did this and this and this, and now we're going to move on to this and this and this. Um, but in a knowledge base, that's not relevant, right? You didn't have the pathway to get there. So you can tag that actual element on the page and say, in the knowledge base, don't show this one. But mm -hmm. it's all actually in one place, making it even more, uh, you know, adding a greater level of flexibility and finite control to this whole idea of, of multi-purposing content from, from one source. So, so that's coming up in um, our summer release this summer. So let me, uh, let me ask, what do you have for your clients in terms of uh, developing their performance competence on using Domino? What mm. do you have for the uh, authors and administrators or how, how do you yeah, yeah. approach that? How do you enable them? Yeah. So um, we're, in definitely what's what's the phrase we i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna mangle it but we 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 eat our own dog food what is that that's, the, what's that's the it <laughs> that's i i it's a what a horrible phrase but you know what i'm saying right yep yep yeah yeah so we actually we use our own tools to teach people to use our tools okay so we do have formal instructional training mm -hmm. um we make it in domino one it's hosted on our convey site um, this is another one of our themes. Um, so it's an e-learning e type of an approach, but a big menu on the front. We start, um, navigation for this is at top and bottom. So a little different than standard e-learning. Mm -hmm. Um, and then right within the tool or right in, in the projects, uh, the content itself, we're using our own software lesson tool, uh, to help people, you know, take care of the things that they need to take care of. Um, so you can watch, this is one of our capture activities, our capture lessons, and you can watch it in an animated show me, or you can simply flip it over if it's easier for you to consume mm -hmm. in guide view. So as I say, the, the guide view is more like a job uh, or a, a manual, you know, a learning, uh, more of a direct learning approach, right? You can actually do it step by step instead of watching the animation version right. and trying to keep up with it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, so like I say, we build all our, our learning content, um, in one place um a great example also of content reuse that we put in motion this particular training guide has a chapter on our capture feature but we also have that available as a separate um training guide of its own but the content's for use so it's always synchronized and, and, and kept up to date across both of those mm -hmm. um and then another variation on all of this too is that if i wanted to learn about say how to use a tab set there's a little help bubble right in the tool 
And I can also pull up that exact same content then right in line as I'm working in the tool. So this lesson here of editing a tab set component is also the very same lesson. Sorry, it might give me a moment. Here we go. Editing a tab set component. This is the exact same content mm -hmm. that's in the training guide, but now also reframed in line as performance support within the tool itself. Um, and then up here in the big question mark button, if you open this up, we also have a, a separate community site, which um, is drives all of our other content, you know, outwards from that as well, all the lessons. So if you're in tool and you wanted to learn, I don't know, let's learn about testing. It takes the search from the authoring environment, flips you over to our community site and starts giving you hits and returns. And again, all of this content is actually also the same content that's in the, uh, the instructional guides, mm -hmm. as well as the inline help. So it's all intermingled and and um and kept concurrent we're um I, I between the the community site um and and the content the training guides etc um we've been really uh, you know proud of the fact that we get to practice what we preach because <laughs> we know the pain of keeping things updated in multiple places from from previous generations of our our tool when we had to do different things as well so well, very so cool. that's you know some of the some of the things that you know there we do have some client teams that jump in and and because they have experience in other tools you know go through it on their own a lot of clients though do also um take on um you know a formal training program at least to get it started etc um, we do have different roles so there are people authors who make things there are administrators who are in charge of not just making things but also you know organization of your site setting up different um content groupings, who who's allowed in and who's, you know, yep. that kind of stuff that administrators do as well too. So, um, so it's, um, you know, you can start out fairly simple and, and make things, but it's definitely also a tool that uh, from a creation perspective can grow. Um, we, we, we rival the, the standard desktop tools in, in terms of the things that you can make. You want to make a game, you can make a Jeopardy game if you need to. <laughs> I'm not advising that as a learning experience, <laughs> But if you need to, you can do it, yeah. you know, or or nonlinear content, branching based content scenario, you know, anything like that, that uh, that you can make in a desktop tool, you can completely do um, in our environment, you know, as well. So um, I, if we're coming to an end here, are we? Sure, we're, I think I think I've talked to you you're off. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 but I, I really appreciate this, but uh, um, since we didn't dry run this, I you know I don't know exactly uh, the 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 flow that you were intending to give us, but I do appreciate that. So where can people who may be interested in this, what do they do next? What, what what's the uh, what's there to do? Where can they find out a little bit more? And who can they who could they talk yeah, yeah. to if they have some specific questions? Yeah, for sure. Well, one great resource obviously is our website yep. www.domino.com. Um, you know, you can you can book a free trial or book a demo site or a demo or walkthrough, et cetera. Okay. Um, and there's the contact form. Even if you just want to start out with higher level questions, fill in the contact form and uh, and reach out to us that way. So that's probably the easiest uh, way to get in touch with us. Mm hmm. Well, very cool. Um Chris, thank you so much for sharing this yeah. uh, with pleasure. me and the audience today. Um, I think this is very, very powerful. Um, and I hope that, uh, you know, we can uh, drive some business your mm -hmm. way, because I think that that us making our own internal processes and how we do work effective and efficient and going beyond those first costs to the life cycle costs and life cycle management of our products are really critical. And, and it can end up be inadvertently very costly if we don't have a, a good way to manage our processes and our content. But thank you so much for, for sharing with us today. Oh, my pleasure. We're always happy to. <laughs> We're pretty proud, actually, you know, uh, of what we've been able to put together um, and our longevity in the space. We've We've heard so many things from people and been able to incorporate those pains, um, solving those pains into the product that it just, you know, keeps getting better. Like I say, we got a summer release coming with even more things to help make all of this even, um, even more powerful. So, okay. 
Any final words or, uh, or hints or suggestions for our audience? Yeah, you know, probably, I mean, the tool's super powerful, but the number one thing that I think most organizations do have to go through um, at some point is um, it's actually earlier than tool. It's deciding that you want to go down a pathway that changes your processes to think about doing things in a way that's you know structured this way, um, as opposed to simply oh, we need a course on something and then, you know, making a course and then, oh, but that, that ability to step back and say, oh, what are the things that we need to do to help the organization improve performance? Some of that sometimes is a course. Sometimes that's, you know, job aids and other tools, et cetera, to help people in the flow. Um, and when we can step back and recognize that that's, you know, the place, you know, well, Domino is here to help you take that the next step after that for sure. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And I'm going to let you go and uh, get this online. Um, I, I, I so much appreciate uh, what you did for us today and also uh, what you do for the profession in general with all the sharing that you do of the videos and the uh, idiotic uh, uh, series of, uh, of webinars that you do. But I yeah. really appreciate it. We we always we always love hearing that people do value it, and um, it's it's just not going to lie. It's the best part of the job too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, great. Well, you have a great day. Thank awesome. you so much. Awesome guy. Thanks so much. Talk All to right. you later. Bye bye. -bye.